known Justin for about two years now. Is he usually early or late on swims? Uh, we'll say generally late. What's up? Right on time. Mm. What's up? See you, man. Morning. 6.38. I'm actually early for once. One minute early. All right. Let's get it today. Yeah. I'm actually, I woke up singing on the drive to the pool, yeah. which is always a good sign. What song? Uh, a lot of that time. I honestly can't remember. At the end, Kanye West came on. <laughs> Ain't nobody with my click. click. <laughs> Alright, 600 choice. 6 times 100 build LT1 to LT2 on 125. Yeah. 450 is kick, 25 fast, 25 easy. Yeah. That's the warm up. That's 1400 warm up. And, and then, then 4 rounds. 4 rounds of 300 LT1 on 415, 3 100s threshold on 115. Except the last round. The fourth round is 300 threshold on 345 right into 3 100s on 115. So is there a break? So it's 1500 of threshold, no break. It's a okay. straight so set, 600. Right Should be 2400 straight. So that last part is going to be 300, 3 100 strong, straight right into, into 300, 300 straight on 340. Yes. Okay. It'll be 900 threshold okay. all on That's fine as long as I just know what's coming. Yep. No, that's a good call out. And then 600 pull 200 easy for 4,800. Might as well make it 400 easy for 5,000. Well, what if we add a 1,200 yard kick set at the end to make it six? Okay, Kevin. No. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but let me see what time my first meeting is. Uh, it's not till 10. I have no real good reason not to do six. All right, so I remember the days of working full time. But the thing is, like, I swear, if yeah, Alex sold his company for millions of dollars, and now he's just my training partner full time. <laughs> Good luck, you got. I swear though, like if you, if if you had employees just like take a day, an hour off in the middle of the day, to actually just take care of their body, I think people would be so much more productive. Because otherwise, people are just counting down the hours for eight hours. Is that what's up? I I agree with you, but no, I, I ride my bike for like an hour and a half. Day and I fall asleep as soon as I get back to the first. How did we go on that 315? The 300? Yeah. Went three, I went 315. 315. Yeah, it was, it was, went 456. Yeah, I think I was 467. Yeah, but yeah, that's okay. On the top? Yeah. 600 cruise? This is where you get the aqua aerobics in the background as well. <laughs> I'm done. I'm gonna do a tempo I am. There you go. Like a six out of ten effort. <laughs> I don't know why we have to do Only I because I just learned how to do a breaststroke pull down. Yeah. And my time has literally improved by five seconds. I mean, I wish we could just uh, do I am like when we're fresh and not 5,000 into a workout. I like doing the hard stuff very, very end. Yeah. If we ever do it. All right, on the top. Fifteen. It's probably the same time I did when I was like eight. <laughs> I 
Yeah. Just getting back into shape. But we got three really good weeks banked. I did. 19 hours, 25 or 26 hours, and last week I think was 22. And I'm feeling pretty good this morning, shockingly. I thought after Saturday's indoor ride that we did was gonna smoke me, but one of my better long runs on the treadmill yesterday. And uh, yeah, not bad today. A little bit of like, hurts to take like a super deep breath. I think I'm just fatigued. I was coughing yesterday. Have you felt that at all? Allergies or anything? No, not really. Uh, it was so windy yesterday, I think the allergies Yeah, like... I got like the dust coughs, but it wasn't, yeah, it definitely wasn't what allergies. Like. Did you bring food over today or I are we did. feeding the vegan? Nope, I brought some food. I'm gonna go stop at the Sprouts before, before I head over. Shirtless drive home with the top down? <laughs> Alright. Four eggs. Oh. We'll, we'll call it a quarter cup of cheese. Quarter cup of cheese. Two tortillas. How many calories is that? And then a whole avocado. So 420 tortillas. I don't know how many is in an egg. We'll, we'll get the calorie counter on the screen. Yeah. I'll figure it out later. Oh. A little tired. Monday's got to be my least favorite day of the week. After a long weekend. Yeah, I'm just getting back into swinging things. Lauren's gone all day. I mean, I basically go to the pool on Mondays, and then I'm home the rest of the day. I won't leave the house now mm -hmm. until tomorrow morning. Try to start my work day at like 9.15 today. I normally have a 9 a.m. meeting on Monday, but it got canceled, so a little more relaxed of a morning. Chicken in the crock pot. Getting on that eggs and chicken diet, man. <laughs> trying to get a, trying to get a 109 off the bike. Apparently, it's just eggs and chicken. Looks better than Roberto's. Yeah, not bad. I mean, I don't know if it's any healthier, but I can make it in seven minutes, and it's freaking cheap on the laptop. Uh, did Lauren make me extra coffee today? No, I don't think she did. Mm -hmm. Little garlic, little soy, little bachans, apple cider, apple cider vinegar. Up. Let that sit for eight hours. And that is probably dinner and lunch for two days and five minutes. Here, go in there. Oh, you got it? That was fast. Alexa, set the pain cave lights to purple. Oh! <laughs> Alexa, set the pain cave lights to pink. Alexa, oh, yeah. set the pain cave brightness to 50%. Yeah. Oh! Isn't this nice, dude? That's this is gonna be a vibe on our That's screen. nice. Bump some music? Oh, Alexa, yeah. set the pain cave lights to green. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that is sick. Set the pancake lights to white. Yeah, no, it's not wow. bad. Isn't that sick? That is. All right, day in the life of Justin. So, what do you do actually for work? I am a senior director of demand generation at Upstart, which is basically a fancy word for I'm in charge of helping our sales team get as many meetings as possible with the people we're trying to sell to. So it's a function of marketing. You know, I, I came up in my career through a bunch of different things, but studied neuroscience in college and corporate strategy, started my own company in college, um, and then went into the consulting world for pharmaceutical companies, learned all about the biotech and life sciences industry, different marketing, business analytics type projects. Um, then I moved into a do it all business development role at a health tech startup where I spent three years and eventually became the head of marketing there. Um, and then yeah, started here at Upstart four years ago as senior manager, got promoted to director, and then last year got promoted to senior director. 
Um, and that's journey, that journey at Upstart has been largely tied to my journey as a pro, which is cool because I was an amateur in 2020 when I started at Upstart during COVID. So yeah, man, I mean, we got two businesses. We're an AI lending company. So one of those businesses is focused on selling software to car dealerships that helps them sell cars faster, more efficiently, and then use our AI financing tool to finance cars um, and make more money and give better loans to people who are buying cars at the dealership. We're partnered with a bunch of different brands like Kia, Volkswagen, Acura, Lexus. So I basically target with my team all of those dealerships across the country. There's about 10,000 of them. We're trying to get in touch with the general managers of those dealerships to pitch them on our product. So we run webinars, we send emails, we make lots of cold calls. So I run those programs, you know, test the messaging, see what's working, what's not, where to allocate our, you know, multi-million dollar marketing budget. It's an awesome job. I actually really like it. It's pretty data driven. You get to use a little bit of creative marketing skills. Um, you know, I didn't think I would like build my whole career around selling to car dealerships, but that's kind of a newer job actually over the last couple of years at Upstart. Prior to that, I was just focused on selling um, financing solutions to banks and credit unions basically. But again, I came from health tech and life sciences. And once you learn the skill sets of demand generation and marketing, you can kind of run the same playbook across different B2B industries. Um, so yeah, really enjoying it. I'm not sure I'll do demand generation forever in my career, but it's definitely where I am uh, kind of like have built the most value and expertise and where I can maximize income and all that stuff. So it's been good. Yeah, no complaints working for a big publicly traded AI tech company. Like I used to love working in small startups. Now I'm enjoying um, the resources of a larger company that come with yeah, more, yeah, a lot of different opportunities, but I think, you know, as I think about what will be next in my career over the next 10 years, I'm pretty open to like all different options, whether it's staying at Upstart, moving all the way up to the SVP, EVP level um, over the next decade here, or moving into a smaller company and being head of marketing, kind of reporting directly to the CEO, maybe moving over to the fitness trap on, um, nutrition, tech, space, you know, like just following my passions there. But yeah, not really sure yet. We'll see, maybe retire at 40 and be a triathlon coach or start a, you know, youth program, depending on where we want to live and how much money we want to live on and what kind of lifestyle we want. So the perks of staying in Henderson, Nevada are quite nice, but I do find myself on Zillow, taking a look at Bay Area real estate in San Francisco, which is uh, yeah, no small financial feat to be able to, you know, pick up our house here and move it to the Bay Area would be a couple million. So we will see how everything shakes out. But for now, I'm pretty happy with my job and it allows me to do triathlon at a really high level and I'm challenged and motivated every day. So grass is always greener, right? It's really easy to say, oh, I just wish I wasn't working, but it is nice to, yeah, keep growing in my career, be intellectually stimulated when I'm, you know, just like kind of brain dumb on the trainer sometimes. So we'll see. So I'm gonna work here while we film all day. So I am a tech recruiter and I work with startups to grow their engineering teams is the short version of what I do. So it looks like we're onboarding a new client today and I have this game. Probably the best part of my job, I could just game. Okay, I don't understand the point of this game. Unfortunately for the Google Calendar, you can't. I wish you could select some people on a day. Yeah. But I think that's a pretty, I'm sure it's a feature request and I'm sure they looked at it for like, a couple months. So think about those as like five million dollar in the deals, right? If there's exclusivity for a state on the table, if that's something that could be, could be as good as that, so maybe that's a double. Uh -oh. oh, that smells good. Are you eating that for lunch already? No, this will be dinner. Dinner. Yeah. What's for lunch? Mm -hmm. oh, my usual go-to. Got some. Maybe a little 
chicken pesto ciabatta. Mm. I'm like the king of making lunch in five minutes. I'm trying to make it actually taste good. This stuff's so good. You and Paul are the ones who should yeah. me about this. They have multiple flavors now, too. It's good. Yeah, it's like pumped out of thin air. It doesn't make sense to me. Gallon a day? No. But a gallon a week, another 170 to the calorie counter. The essentials in my fridge, chicken breast, that beer's been there a long time. Where'd you source the chicken from? <laughs> this is Smith's Tyson. It's like the <laughs> cheapest one. I get it on Instacart, so you never really know what you're gonna get sometimes. Salmon is the go-to, little Trader Joe's, ciabatta, some veggies. Cheese and tortillas, eggs, feta. Pretty basic, honestly. I live, pretty much live on carbs, almond milk, peanut butter. I've got some ketones in here from the feed. Tactical. I've been taking like half of those every couple days when I'm tired. It's my ice Frozen cream. pizzas. Frozen pizzas, nice. Of course. Cream. What's in the pantry? More carbs, graham crackers, honey bunches of oats, rice, goldfish, bunch of powders for drink mix, protein bars, liquid IV. Very oh. organized with your eh, kind of sugars. Yeah, these are nice. I mean, I drink, you know, sugar every day, so. That's about it. Pillow performance. What have we got in here? Plasmid, pillar. Yeah, all the good stuff. You like that plasmid? No, I don't. It doesn't it taste good. It makes my stomach feel like crap. You want it? I'll take it. I'll try <laughs> it. Do you take it during... I mean, that's the great thing about the feed is like you can buy this stuff and try it out, but this is not for me. I mean, it just messed with my stomach and I didn't notice anything, okay. so... Do you take it during exercise or before know. or after? They say it's a supplement or you can take it before, but... Yeah, I don't really know. I don't get it. You can have it, though. I'm not going to use it. This is what you do between calls? Yeah, I try to, I'm trying to do this like two times a day, two times 10 reps, single leg with 15 pounds, and it's getting easier. And my Achilles, plantar fasciitis, and peroneal tendonitis, I've had like varying issues in my foot that are all like one out of 10 type issues, but not, I wouldn't call them serious. And I've also had a little bit of left knee patella tendonitis that I've actually been battling since last November almost a year now. So when I just do like a eccentric or isometric hold, I guess, 30 seconds on my load that knee up. Fancy with it. There you go. My man. All right. Thirty seconds to the next meeting. Nope. Oh, back to the cage we go. Cleanup is gonna have to wait.
when does work ever interfere with training? I mean, the times that it interferes the most with training are when I go to in-person work trips. Um, I don't think I could do what I'm doing at the level I'm doing it in triathlon if I worked in an office every day. There's just no way. That's the truth. It's the best, um, the best impact that COVID has ever had on me in my career is that I'm able to be flexible and work from home and not commute and save that hour a day and yeah, just have the flexibility to recover and sit in this comfy chair and wear shorts all day. And like, yeah, it's, I'm glad I didn't start my career that way because it'd be really tough. But now, you know, work only interferes with training like every couple of months, um, I would say. There's occasionally, like I said, the seven or eight a.m. meetings. There's occasionally the days where I'd love to get on the trainer at two o'clock and instead I'm getting on at five o'clock. Like, obviously, if I was a full-time pro, I'd probably be knocking out my training from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every day and then just relaxing all afternoon. But I mean, what, what would I do? Like, I don't know what these guys actually do all day. They don't have jobs. That's, I mean, maybe they nap, maybe they coach, maybe they are doing other stuff, sleeping in for sure. I mean, I wake up at 5.36 every day. I guess I wouldn't do that anymore, but it's always hard to like imagine what it would be like to, because my body couldn't handle training much more than four hours a day. I mean, that's 28 hours a week. So yeah, I guess you just, Fill your time with other things, reading books and watching shows or playing video games. I don't know. I know Trevor Foley plays a lot of video games, he told me, but like, yeah, I've never, never been into that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't interfere that much though. It does sometimes. And you know, people say, oh, you'd be able to recover a lot better if you didn't have a job. That might be true, but like, I'm also just sitting down all day, you know, I'm not like doing hard labor in the heat. So the stress sometimes does wear on me when I have to like fire somebody on my team or navigate like a difficult business strategy situation or if we're missing the numbers on the quarter, like that'll keep me up at night. But not every night and it's not so tough. You know, I came from consulting in the early stages of my career where I did work 70 hours a week and I was like not sleeping because I was so stressed. This is not that, thank goodness. So. I have no desire to be back in a role like that right now. Maybe in the future, without triathlon, I would want something that really grinds me down and makes it really like uh, all-consuming type work. And I could do that, and I would enjoy it, I think. But um, I think work plus triathlon right now is all-consuming, basically. All right, what advice would you give to people that are working full-time and training triathlon full-time as well? I mean, that's like, you know, 99% of triathletes, I think. That's, that's always been me and all the amateurs. Um, what advice would I give them? I mean, how, does, how, do, how would you tell them to stay productive, I guess is the better question. I mean, I think, I think limiting distractions at work um, is the number one thing for me. Like, when I'm working, I'm heads down. You know, like I just said, I just put iMessage on my computer for the first time in five years, and I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I think you got a, one tool I use is called Zero Inbox, which basically, you know, every time you get an email, you tag it like must do slash, ha, you know, should do or just delete. And then I basically use my inbox and keep it at zero all the time to make sure I'm on top of work. So there's a little couple little things, um, time blocking, you know, your day up to the 30 or 60 minutes, I think is like incredibly important skill. Basically pre, I, every Sunday I take my training peaks I look at my work calendar and then I jam the two together and work, you know, always comes first. And I say, okay, what are all the non-flexible or inflexible meetings that are on my calendar that I can't move this week? Okay. What sessions have to go where? And then I basically go into my work calendar and block those times off. Now, not everybody has that luxury. Like if you've got a manager that's looking at your calendar every day and you can't put a three or 4 PM trainer ride on there, I understand that. Um, there were times in my career where I didn't have the ability to do that, but now I do, so I take advantage of that and I basically say, all right, I'm busy during these times, I'm not busy during these times, and then I work around all of that um, through the week, every week. So, you know, I basically have all my work meetings in blue, all my training sessions in pink, and slot it all in. It usually looks like a 40 hour work week and a 20 hour training week. And it's every morning and every night. So, if you want to do this at the highest level while working full time, you kind of got to sacrifice everything else. I think that's the thing that you don't see is like, a day in the life is pretty freaking boring. It's training, working, training, working, sleeping, eating. That's it. There's no drinking, there's no social time, unless I'm training with people, which is the swim and the bike today. And 
I go to bed at nine every single night. I went to my friend's house on Saturday night and I was the first person to leave at nine o'clock and I had one drink. And like, it's all those tiny little decisions that stack up and it's not something I did for years, but now it's something I'm having to do at this level to try to get to the next level racing against people that aren't doing this with a full-time job. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't golf anymore. I don't ski anymore. I don't backpack anymore. I have lots of passions in life that I aim to revisit in, you know, let's say like three to five years or whenever this pro triathlon thing runs its course. But for now, it's all I'm doing and I'm all in on it. sexy training videos after this one. <laughs> what have we got today? I haven't even looked at the workout. They just, I have 90 minutes easy. I so got we have some intervals, I think. 30 minutes easy, 20 minutes at 260. Then short sprints. Oh my god. I haven't done this in years. Months. Months, maybe years. 2 times 10 times 30 seconds hard, 30 seconds easy with 5 minutes in between. A mm. little bit of VO2 max work. Yeah. VO2. Did not know today was a VO2 day. I got it mentally ready for that. That's it. I can just go sit on the couch, watch some Netflix, take a nap. Standard, uh, standard Monday stuff. Still got to pack up the road bike for the weekend. What time is it? So my watch gonna focus. Right at six. Six o'clock. Perfect. Not bad. I try to never work out after seven. Normally, I'm if I have a two or two and a half hour ride, then I'm on here till seven. But now we'll go get a little snack and. What else do I got to do? Pack the roadie, make some dinner. All the chicken's already made, we're just gonna do rice tonight. That's easy. How are we looking? Oh yeah. As a vegan, it does how's smell the, good. How, yeah, I was gonna say, how does the vegan in you feel about this? Still smells. Oh. Not that it doesn't smell good. Oh yeah. All right, well thanks for tuning in to A Day in the Life. Pretty, uh, Pretty boring, typical Monday. I think our next video is going to be exciting. It's actually going to be a beer mile at altitude on Friday, which is going to be my first ever beer mile at Schaefer's bachelor party. So stay tuned for that and, you know, more race content coming up here in September as I hit the back half of my season. Thanks everyone.